Good morning, Josh the Driving Instructor here. Welcome back. And today we're going to be looking at turns of the wheel. Very cryptic name. There are three ways of how to generally turn the car. We're gonna have a look at each of these, figure out which is the best, if there is a best, and is there any room for either of the others as well, or is it just always using one method of steering? So the first method is often known as the hand over hand technique, and that is where it involves a bit of crossing of the arms. Very popular in America, I believe. The second method is the push pull technique, which involves pulling with one hand and gently pushing with the other. And the final technique, which is often referred to as wiping the dishes. And you'll soon see why. So first of all, the hand over hand technique. Now, some people actually still believe that this can cause you to fail your test, but that is not the case. If you use the hand over hand technique, basically if you're crossing your arms on your driving test, this will not cause you to fail your driving test, provided you are holding the wheel safely and securely throughout the test. Now this method is often used when you're dealing with particularly sharp bends, where you really need to keep turning that wheel more than a full turn, and that's when people start to cross their arms. If you're dealing with just a normal bend, or if you're dealing with a very short corner, your hands are generally going to stay on the wheel, especially if it's anything less than around an eighth of a turn. My opinion on this, I don't think it's comfortable. I don't like it, but that's probably me being biased because I was always brought up with the pull push technique and that's the technique that I actually teach my students. But if you do cross your arms, that is not to say there's an issue with that at all. How does this affect on the driving test using the hand over hand technique? There should be no effect on the driving test in the UK using this technique, provided you are holding the wheel securely at all times and you're in good control of the car. What you're not okay doing is when you come out of the corners, letting go of the wheel like so. This is when you're highly likely to lose control of the car, especially if you hit something like a pothole, or if you just misjudge the wheel and it slides too far through your hands, that is not safe. So if you are using this hand over hand technique, make sure you do not let go of the wheel when you're finishing off around that corner. Now, often when learners first start to drive, they often go for the hand over hand technique just because it's almost comes naturally to them. This isn't a problem except when they get their arms too far to the bottom and they try and continue them round. The, this is when they end up like an octopus because they cross their arms and then they realize they can't actually turn the wheel anymore. Now, the second technique, which is my favorite technique, is the pull push technique. This is when you literally, when you're turning, you will pull the wheel with one hand and you will gently push with the other hand. I have a preference, especially if it's a fast corner, of putting both hands at the top of the wheel, pulling with one hand and meeting the other hand at the bottom of the wheel. Again, then when I'm coming out of the corner, I will use that other hand to then pull the wheel around or push the wheel around and then the other hand will then meet it back at the top. With this method, you never actually tend to cross your arms or your hands. They only meet at the top or they meet at the bottom. Uh, you can just do this between two and 10. There are a few variations of this, um, such as the favored variation, which is where you're tending to use probably just the central area of the wheel um, and you will do just gen very gentle feeds through the wheel. I prefer full half feeds of the wheel, but that's personal preference. My opinion, this is the best option of the three. That is probably just personal biased opinion because it's the one that I'm used to and it's the one I tend to teach my students. It is also the one that you're least likely to break a wrist or break your hand if the airbag goes off or if you end up having getting into an accident or bouncing the wheels off a curb and your hands are inside or folded over the wheel. Effects on the driving test. Well, this is definitely the most recognized technique for steering the car in the UK driving test but that's not to say it's the only technique. But what you do need to think about here is every driving examiner on the driving test did used to be a driving instructor. So they've all taught their own students and they know how students learn and how students are generally going to be taught. Although every driving instructor will teach slightly differently. So when they're doing their driving exam and they're actually examining you, they are looking for a series of points to make sure that you are generally ticking. And the more points you can tick, the better your chances of passing that driving test. What I mean by that is if you're preferably using the pull push technique as opposed to the hand over hand technique, that's one point that's going to go a tick in your favor. If you're regularly using the handbrake when, when necessary, say for instance, a particularly big hill, or you're stopping at lights that are, you know you're gonna be there for a few minutes or a railway crossing, using the handbrake, again, tick's going to go in your favor. 
if you've got to a stage in your driving practice where you're no longer kangarooing and you're driving nice and smoothly using the correct gear, saving fuel, saving the environment, etc., etc., again, that's a tick that's going to go in your favor. So the more ticks you can get, the better it's going to be. It's just something to think about if you're actually planning to take your driving test. If you're still watching at this point, can you get in the comments below right now? Tell me which method of steering you use and why. Okay, the final method, sometimes referred to as wiping the dishes, and you will see why. Essentially, this method involves using the palm of your hand or your just one hand on the top of the wheel and using pushing onto the wheel and actually turning the wheel with just that one hand. Never, ever do this while you're driving on a road. However, this is a really good method while reversing the car. Because while reversing the car, this means you can put one arm behind the passenger seat, pulling your body around to be able to comfortably look behind you. As we're only going to be traveling at around one, two, maybe three miles per hour while reversing, it's not such a danger only having one hand on the wheel. My opinion is this is a great option for reversing, especially as I'm not very fit. So being able to put my arm on the back of the passenger seat and turn my body around, forcing it around is very useful. It also encouraged me to actually fully turn properly, showing I'm observing and being able to see out of all the windows at the back of the car. How does it affect the driving test? You are absolutely fine using one hand on the steering wheel while reversing if your arm is going behind the passenger seat to pull your body around. There are, however, a few don'ts. The first don't, don't ever put your hand inside the wheel when you're turning the wheel, even if you are using two hands on the wheel. Reason being, if you do end up hitting a curb or getting into a more serious accident and something forces those wheels to straighten or change direction very quickly and your wrists and hands are stuck inside the wheel, imagine those turning too quickly, snap, crackle and pop goes your wrist. Again, be very careful about having both your hands at the top of the wheel or driving with one hand on top of the wheel. Again, unlikely, but again, in the event of the airbag going off in the center of your wheel, as you can imagine, that's going to go on your wrist or on your arm. It's not going to be a pretty situation. Final tip, ideal driving position, hands on the sides of the wheels. It used to be known as 10 and 2. Now it's known as quarter to 3. Generally, left hand just above the central gripper, uh, right hand just above the central gripper. It tends to be the most popular and best place to keep your hands. However, providing your hands are on the side of the wheel at some point, uh, preferably just slightly above the middle, you're laughing. You're going to be absolutely fine. I am Josh, the driving instructor, and this has been a pleasure. Till the next time.